In the previous episode, Alan received applause from the crowd as he successfully defeated two troublemakers bothering Charlotte. Little did he know, the two troublemakers reported the incident to their boss, a monstrous figure. A large and intimidating monster approached Alan, expressing discontent with his actions towards the two troublemakers. As Alan approached the monster, he recognized it. It was Magus, a schoolmate from seven years ago. Magus, however, did not remember Alan and sternly warned him not to act familiar. Alan revealed his full name, Alan Crawford, from the Athena Academy of Magic, where they once studied together. Magus was shocked to discover that the man before him was the great demon king he had once respected. Magus bowed before Alan, seeking forgiveness. Witnessing the towering monster bowing, including the two troublemakers, left everyone astonished. One of the troublemakers even suggested Magus should hit Alan. But instead, Magus scolded his subordinates, and with one blow, they fell. Charlotte was puzzled by the recent events. Aluka explained that Aluka's father and Alan were the heads of the Athena Academy of Magic. Alan, the youngest graduate in their school's history, was a genius who went on to teach at the academy, and the title Great Demon King was Alan's nickname in school, with everyone greatly respecting him. Magus continued to kneel, seeking forgiveness for disturbing Alan. Alan clarified that it was not him but rather the valuable women in his life who were bothered by Magus's subordinates. The next day, Alan sat pensively on the porch of his house. Mayich and Aluka approached him. Alan learned that Mayich and Aluka were already acquainted and close friends. Mayich inquired about what happened to Alan, and Aluka immediately guessed that it must be related to Charlotte. Alan was surprised that his sister could accurately guess, and Aluka explained that nothing else could make Alan so downhearted except for Charlotte. Aluka suspected they had quarreled. Alan explained that a month had passed since he started giving Charlotte her salary, but she refused to accept it, considering her tasks only involved cleaning. Charlotte didn't think such tasks deserved payment, but Alan clarified that the salary she received was fair compensation for her efforts. While Charlotte could save the money, Alan suggested using it instead. Alan asked if there was anything Charlotte wanted to do, and she expressed a desire to take a solo trip to the city. However, she quickly retracted her statement. Panicking, Alan promised to fulfill Charlotte's request, assuring her that with magic, everything would be fine. He allowed her to go, unable to bear seeing Charlotte plead. Alan, uncertain, sought the opinions of Aluka and Mayich, as letting Charlotte go alone to the city seemed like throwing meat to wild animals. Despite Charlotte's initial request, Alan felt extremely worried. After deliberation, the three of them decided to discreetly follow Charlotte to the city. Arriving in the middle of the city, Charlotte felt incredibly happy and never expected to be able to go to the city alone. Meanwhile, Alan, Aluka, and Mayich hid behind a wall to observe her. Charlotte took out a map from her bag and followed the directions indicated on it. Alan smiled in relief, seeing Charlotte following what he had taught her earlier. Aluka asked Alan why Charlotte wanted to go to the city, and Alan replied that Charlotte wanted to shop, but she kept what she was going to buy a secret from Alan. Aluka and Mayich teased Alan because Charlotte didn't tell him what she would buy, leaving Alan slightly shocked. If Charlotte is willing to keep something from Alan, it means she's starting to have her own ego. Alan began to show his fear that Charlotte might start thinking only about herself and make things difficult for him. As they monitored Charlotte, her behavior seemed a bit strange, and it seemed like she was lost. She repeatedly opened the map, showing a confused expression. Worse yet, if she continued straight ahead, she would enter the Mir District, a somewhat dangerous place. At the entrance, there was a group of scammers called Serpent Fang, led by Glow, the snake venom user. Aluka offered to pretend to meet Charlotte and stop her, but Alan forbade it because it was Charlotte's first adventure, and he wanted no one to interfere. Alan excused himself for a small matter and entrusted the surveillance to Aluka and Mayich. Aluka was curious about the map Charlotte was looking at, and Charlotte's footsteps were getting closer to the Mir district. Passing through some empty buildings and deserted streets made Aluka and Mayich increasingly worried about Charlotte. Aluka, frustrated, searched for her brother's whereabouts while the situation became more precarious. Suddenly, the Serpent Fang group intercepted and surrounded Charlotte. Aluka and Mayich were about to approach them, but the Serpent Fang group welcomed Charlotte enthusiastically. They cheered and welcomed Charlotte warmly. Alan returned to Aluka and Mayich, 
and Aluka asked where her brother was. Alan casually replied that he went around to confront the scammer group and told her to welcome Charlotte warmly. Alan was indeed amazing, even surpassing overprotective parents. Their beaten up bodies made Charlotte feel sorry for them, and she offered to treat their wounds. Charlotte took out a magical potion and invited them to use it to heal quickly. They cried with gratitude and thanked her, kneeling and praising Charlotte as a goddess. Perhaps for them, this was the first time someone treated them kindly. They also promised to live properly from now on. Charlotte was surprised and told them to get up. Alan praised Charlotte from a distance, indeed, Charlotte was very good at winning people's hearts. Suddenly, they inquired about Charlotte's relationship with the great demon king. Charlotte mentioned that they were all acquaintances of Alan, but one of them revealed they were forced to welcome Charlotte. Alan cursed from afar, as he had previously instructed them not to disclose the truth. Alan had threatened them using his magical skills. Globe, the group's leader, immediately remembered Alan's threat and signaled his friends to remain silent. Charlotte then explained her relationship with Alan, stating that Alan was a kind person who not only provided her with a place to stay but also employed her as a maid in his house. Alan treated her very well, and to her, he was her master. Some of them assumed that Charlotte might have been deceived or coerced by Alan, and there might be criminal elements involved. Hearing this, Alan also realized the stark contrast between the kind goddess everyone knew and the feared great demon king. Charlotte refuted their statements, emphasizing that Alan was incredibly kind to her. They learned that the great demon king indeed had another side to his nature. Charlotte added that Alan taught her some inappropriate mischief. Though they spent the night doing it, she found it enjoyable. Charlotte's recent words could be interpreted as something improper, but Alan had only taught her to play games and indulge in snacks all night. Charlotte was an innocent girl, but her story made Alan a bit embarrassed, fearing that people might assume he had done something inappropriate with her. After that, Charlotte expressed her gratitude and bid farewell to continue her journey. She continued walking further into the city. Aluka and Mayic were worried because there might be other dangerous groups. However, Alan remained optimistic, determined to make this area his domain. Together, Alan, Aluka, and Mayic conquered all the dangerous groups in the area to ensure Charlotte could adventure safely. They successfully dealt with groups like the Doll family, the Werewolf humans, and even the Great Fragments, thanks to their collective strength and Alan's concoctions of magical potions. Once everything was conquered and the conditions were deemed safe, Maij suggested that Alan and Aluka wait somewhere, and only she would keep an eye on Charlotte from a distance. Especially since Charlotte didn't want Alan to know what she would buy. After some time, Maij approached Alan and informed him that Charlotte had finished shopping. Charlotte met her acquaintances, and soon they would pass through the street. Alan was still curious about what Charlotte had bought, but Maij told him she didn't find out because it violated ethics. Charlotte came with an accessory seller, and they approached Alan, Aluka, and Maij. Charlotte and the accessory seller felt proud and amazed because along the way, they heard people talking about Alan bringing peace to the city. It turned out that the scammer groups that Alan had conquered were the source of problems in this city. Alan didn't expect it, but he did it all for Charlotte, and the impact brought goodness to everyone. The accessory seller remarked that Charlotte was very fortunate to have a reliable person. However, Alan reiterated that there was no relationship between them. The accessory seller smiled, encouraged Alan, bid farewell, and thanked them all. Alan asked about Charlotte's shopping activities today. Charlotte said everything went smoothly and showed two items she had bought from the newly opened store. These items were gifts from Charlotte to Aluka and Maij because they had often helped her. The gifts were a cat doll for Aluka and a hat for Maij. They were delighted to receive special gifts from Charlotte's first salary. Seeing this, Alan felt envious and asked about his gift. Charlotte had been looking for a gift for Alan, but she didn't know what kind of items Alan liked. Alan then complained saying that he would happily accept anything Charlotte gave him, whether it was stamps, postcards, thumb cards, flags, train photos, a flower, even pebbles, earthworms, or seaweed. Any gift from Charlotte, he would gladly accept. Charlotte apologized for her lack of sensitivity, even though Alan had taken good care of her. Feeling guilty, Charlotte admitted her ignorance of Alan's preferences. Alan reassured her, saying he didn't mean to blame her. Finally, 
Charlotte offered to fix Alan's row because some stitches had come loose. She mentioned that she would sew it while wanting to chat longer with Alan at home. She wanted to learn more about Alan, even the things that were his favorites. Alan gladly agreed. Once they arrived home, they spent time together. While Charlotte was fixing the row, Alan shared more about himself. An intuition in Alan said that this was certainly more valuable than anything else. Sitting together, chatting with the woman he was starting to like. 